Your yeah, ass looking nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, mira lo ponyo tie. Wine, wine, saki, wine, saki, wine, saki. I say, who, 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 saki, na jacky. Revision. A lot of money into buying this building, into developing this concept, so black people can have somewhere nice to go to, okay? Somewhere where we can feel good about ourselves as a. The one! Please. Somewhere where our people can feel good about ourselves as a culture, okay? Yeah. No, no, real talk. And so all this twerking and shit, take it to prime, take it to pink, don't bring it here because we're a restaurant. And so beyond that, 75% of my customers are ladies. And I want men to show respect for themselves for how they carry themselves here. So how can I tell the men to respect themselves and you guys are twerking on glass here? If you want to do it, get the fuck out my restaurant. Because I did it for our people and I did it for our culture. So don't do it, no, don't do it again. I don't want to hear it. If you don't like it, get out because I don't need your money. I need to pr provide something for my people. And don't do it again. Thank you. With all due respect, lady, I invested a lot of money into buying this building and to developing this concept so black people can have somewhere nice to go to, okay? Somewhere where we can feel good about ourselves as a. But what? Stop the music, please. Somewhere where our people can feel good about ourselves as a culture, okay? Yeah. Like, no, no, real talk. And so all this twerking and shit, take it to prime, take it to pink, don't bring it here because we're a restaurant. And so beyond that, 75% of my customers are ladies. And I want men to show respect for themselves for how they carry themselves here. So how can I tell the men to respect themselves and you guys are twerking on glass here? If you want to do it, get the fuck out of my restaurant. Because I did it for our people and I did it for our culture. So don't do it, no, don't do it again. I don't want to hear it. If you don't like it, get out because I don't need your money. I need to pr provide something for my people. Hey you guys, welcome back to my platform It's your boy Tyson, I hope y'all are doing fine today I'm sorry y'all, I know I've been out of commission for a little while I haven't really been posting like that in the last few months um, It's just a lot of personal stuff going on Even today, uh, Bovid aside Even today, one of our co-workers, she's pregnant And she um, passed out and started having seizures left and right And was throwing up so the paramedics had to come. I had to take over her job. And it was just a lot of stuff. So a, a lot of stuff is going on. And prayers to her. I hope everything is okay with her and her baby. But at any rate, y'all just seen that video. So let's go ahead and get into it. I don't want to make too long of an interlude. So basis, if you're not caught up to the situation, this restaurant is called Truth's Kitchen. It's a black-owned restaurant. Um, from what I can tell, the owner's name is Kevin Kelly. Now, when I looked up images... Ooh, excuse me, I'm sorry. When I looked up images uh, to get of the restaurant for the video and stuff like that, I did see him and another black man kind of, you know, standing, um, as you can see the picture on the video, if you're on YouTube watching. Um, shout out to my anchor family too. What's up? Apple Podcasts and all that. But um, I did see them standing there looking kind of co-ownerish. So maybe he's a co-owner, but he's at least partial owner of Truth's Kitchen cocktails or true's kitchen yeah true true kitchen cocktails i'm sorry that is the correct name so with that being said um let's discuss logic over emotion i think this is so important to maintain that morality or that mindset when it comes to running a business especially a restaurant whatever that customer is doing you do not let them see you lose your cool i have lost my cool with one customer before and she was a karen so maybe we'll do a story time about that one day if y'all want let me know down below but she was a karen and she even said and i quote don't make me have to pull a karen she said something to the effect of that and at that point bitch i will run you over with this truck vroom vroom bitch but I can't say that out loud, you know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with a customer, and other customers are watching. And, of course, they had my back, but you know what I'm saying? In that moment, I had to keep my emotions in check as close, as much as possible. And I had to go to the back, and I had to air punch, and I had to do that with my hands a couple times. I, I ain't going to lie. I wanted to beat her ass. I did. But you can't do that. This is a professional workplace. So you have to be able to keep those emotions in check. 
and let the customer or that's acting up or whoever look like a fool call security if you need to call the police and I think that's where Mr. Kevin went wrong there's a way to assert yourself and I feel like his assertion was a bit overkill I don't like the mindset of one I, I don't like the spoiled apple in the bunch but I also don't like the teacher you know just for example the teacher who checks all the students on behalf of like three students acting up. If only those three students were talking during the test or whatever they were doing that you didn't like as a teacher, you tell them to stay back when the class bell rings and then you get onto them. You don't take it out on all of us because all of us ain't do shit. So now you got a problem with the whole class and you di they didn't even do anything. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, um, logic over emotion is important to keep your emotions in check and think logically as much as possible. I understand we're all humans. You know what I'm saying? And the customer is not always right. But that's an important mindset to keep. And that's just business one-on-one. Next, I think a lot of people are speaking about this who are, how do I say it? You're approaching this with a nine-to-five mindset instead of a business mindset. And I can't, I'm not saying, there's nothing wrong with working a nine-to-five. I do work a nine-to-five. Um, but I've also ran a business you know what I'm saying I've also acted as my own sole proprietor so I understand there's certain channels certain proper um what is the word I'm looking for certain proper channels certain ways to do things correctly you know what I'm saying there's a certain amount of things I keep up with with running my own business taxes um if I have to pay somebody to do my taxes you know this, that, and the third. But nonetheless, what I really want to get into is ambiance. You know what I'm saying? And I'll just use me for an example. Um, back when I was doing Uber driving, there's a certain ambiance that I would set with the music I would play. Um, one thing that black Uber drivers probably can relate to is I don't, I don't know about them. I don't know if they consciously do this because not everybody's the same. I do not like non-black people using the N-word around me. I just don't like the shit. I don't care. There is no, I don't care if it's not fair to you. I don't care. I'm not arguing with it. I just don't like it. If that's the type of person you are, I will keep you at an arm's distance if I even have to deal with you on a day to day basis. I don't like that shit. I feel it is disrespectful. It is a slap in my face for you to do that in my space. So, because I feel that way, I do not play rap while I have non black or let's see, yeah, non black riders in the truck. Or in my car. I just don't even run or run that risk. So that is something that I have to take into effect. You know what I'm saying? When I'm picking up, you know, white people or non-black people, you know, and it's a bunch of kids, you know. I understand hip-hop is, you know, I understand hip-hop is, it trends, transcends race. And that's fine. We can all partake in that. And most of my passengers, they haven't tried me like that. I've ever once in a while had one that doesn't. And unfortunately, you if you don't want your rating fucked up, you just kind of have to smile and get through the ride and hurry up and get their ass home and get them out of your truck. And, you know, if you want to give them a fucked up rating or whatever, do that. <laughs> but that is a way that I set the ambiance for the truck. You know what I'm saying? I usually turn on Spotify and turn on pop music. You know what I'm saying? Keeps everybody kind of satisfied. They don't know some of the stuff. Gives the, a little something to head bob to. So that is how I set my ambiance now as far as or how I would set it back when I was Uber driving. Now, let's talk about True Kitchen's atmosphere. For one, um, I don't, I mean, looking at the restaurant, it did look kind of upscale to an extent, but it really was given more like a sports bar type of setting. Um, they also had recycled liquor bottles that they were serving as drinks. So it can't be but so upscale of a restaurant. Now, I don't have no problem with that. I think that's an actual kind of unique idea. Um, as long as y'all are just pouring the liquor out and you're not, you know, actually like this is something somebody drank from, which of course I, I'm assuming they're not doing that. They're not doing that. But um, yeah, you have recycled liquor bottles. <laughs> and another point that a lot of people were making was they were playing twerk music. If y'all paid attention to the um, beautiful woman who um, had posted, she posted that video on Instagram. Um, Body was playing right before he cut the music. You know, it was just starting to come on the song by Megan Thee Stallion. So I just want to put that into effect. Now, does that mean, and this is why I said I wanted to discuss this because I think people are being very binary. 
Does that mean that, it, oh, twerk music is on, so let me twerk? Obviously not. It does not. However, like I told y'all earlier, there's a certain ambiance that you set. There's a certain energy I'm going to, music is energy. If I go to a DMX concert, I expect to see people getting crunk. Whereas if I go to an opera, I expect to see people sitting in their chair, classically enjoying the music. So, and no, that's not to equate whiteness to class because black people can like opera too. Anybody can like it. But you get the gist of what I'm saying. I expect to see two different settings because those musics create two different energies. So that is what people are saying. And that paired with recycled liquor bottles <clears throat> and a sports bar type setting, I could see somebody busting a move or two. Now, we will go over what he alleged. And if what he's saying is true, then yes, these women were definitely doing the most. But we'll go over that in a second. Um, now one thing I don't like is practice what you preach. I learned last night I was on a live and a pretty reputable source had let it be known that he also has a video of him dancing with a black man on his own table in his restaurant. That is hypocritical to me. Now I do believe that as humans, we are all hypocrites at one point or another in time in life. You know, even if it's something as general as you telling your baby sister or baby brother to stop running in the house, knowing damn well when you was a kid, that's what you used to do. Now, I'm not saying you need to be penalized for running in the house, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. I think we've all said or tried to steer away loved ones from doing stuff that we probably do in our day to day life. I don't think that's bad. It's a part of human growth, but I do think we should strive to be the least bit of hypocrites that we can. And if you're saying, don't get up on the furniture and dance, then I'm going to need you not to be doing that. Now, I wasn't able to locate the video of him doing that. But like I said, that's a, the person who I got that from is a pretty reputable person in these YouTube streets. So with that being said, let's go into um, his post real quick. And then we will also go into, y'all give me one second to pull this up. All right, so we're gonna go back to his speech because I did have issues with his speech, but first let's go ahead and get into his response. We'll work it a little backwards, just a little bit. So apparently him and his wife have been kind of going back at people the last few days and defending themselves, um, which they have the right to do so. So he wrote, thanks for the post. I appreciate your comments and we'll share a bit more. There were three tables that had been spoken to about twerking. They were approached very politely less than 10 minutes before. Despite this, the last young woman decided to stand in our booth seats, place her hand against the glass windows and start twerking on the glass. Enough was enough for not only that lady, but for that three tables of women, the three tables of women who were the only ones in our restaurant to act this way. As for the music, we created true for it to be a place music could be enjoyed while we sit and eat. No song is played. No song played is an excuse to God damn. I need y'all to spell check shit. Niggas can't spell. Let me relax. That's why we call this podcast that. Anyway, no song played is an excuse to stand on our furniture and do what this lady did. There are places for this and true is not one. As for my delivery, I can assure you I was I can assure you I was a gentleman earlier, but my nice words weren't respected. True will be for some and not all and this is okay. So that is what he stated in his response back to somebody. I couldn't see their comment. I guess they were, you know, applauding him cuz he didn't really seem like he was coming coming at them. Now, let's get into their dress code real quick. Um, so it says, please ver verify that guests are not wearing the following and you need to do it before you seat them or have them waitlisted. No ball caps or casual headwear, do rag hair caps, no slides, all slides, especially fuzzy ones, no tank tops, no body suits, no explicit words, less visuals. Well, my ass already can't eat them. <laughs> no jerseys, no sagging pants, no sweatsuits, sweatpants, yoga outfits, gym clothes. All right. And then, of course, it says down below, be respectful when informing guests they are not following our dress code and we have the right to refuse service and we'll exercise that right if anyone appears in a way that is not respectful to the majority of guests or that does not align with the true kitchen and cocktails way. Is Buddy a blood? Because why is it? Okay, let me relax. <clears throat> Maybe it just goes with the kings. I mean, the kitchen. Okay, let me relax. <laughs> but um, so there's uh, that's the breakdown as far as the dress code and as far as his response. Um, so give me one second. 
All right, you guys, so I'm back. Sorry, I had to finish that wine out. Okay, so let's get into this. Now, one big problem area before I get into the whole hood culture situation, we'll get into that. But before we get into that, a big problem area that I had is when it comes to respectability politics, I feel like we as black people, I don't think that respectability politics are all the way, you know, bad. You know what I'm saying? I do think it's, there's a certain level of respect that you should have in public. Public decency is a thing. And that's why I have such a problem with a lot of like radical groups. You know what I'm saying? And it's not so much that the idea of the group is wrong. For example, feminism. Um, well, I mean, that really just benefits white women. Womanism. Let's talk about that. The movement for womanism. The extremists usually are the loudest people. And they're not the only people. You know what I'm saying? You have other people in different social groups who have loud extremist people. The hoteps, um, the extremists of the trans community, LGBT, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And it's important not to take the extremists and make them an example. But with that being said... I think that Kevin Kelly is an example of the extreme. It's it's really the verbiage for me in what he said. I feel like if we're going to have a conversation on respectability politics as black people, then this is what we need to do with white people. All the Caucasians to the back. Immediately. Immediately. Honestly, thank you. Looks better already. And dead ass. Like, I'm so serious. Dead them. They don't need to be a part of that conversation. We need to have a conversation about manners and respectability. We can do that without using European people as the scope of what class is because they're not. They're not the episode of class. I know some ghetto ass white people and ghetto ass non black people, literally within arm's distance of me. So I don't, I see the same thing with like the whole Jeannie Mai Jeezy situation. I don't know why y'all trying to paint her as some docile Asian woman. He said it himself, even though I thought it was corny. Um, she knows more E-40 than him, even though I thought it was corny. Because it's like, again, you know, we're always talking about we're not a monolith. But then we say stupid shit like that. As if somebody knowing more hip hop than you makes them more urban or more black or whatever. I don't, I don't. That's Jeezy and Jeannie's relationship. But nonetheless, they don't need to be in this conversation. European standards, Eurocentric ways, mannerisms, any of that doesn't need to be in this conversation. If we're going to have a honest conversation about respectability politics and uh, how to govern that with our people. Now, I can go by breakdown. I can go break down the dress code. And I can tell you right now, I told y'all earlier, there are some parts of respectability politics I have no problem with. Let's go down the list. Um, no ball, ball caps or casual headwear. Do-rag, hair cap, bonnet. It says et cetera, but we, we can go ahead and add bonnets in there. I have no problem with that. I think y'all need to leave that shit at home. Every time I see somebody in a do-rag or a bonnet, I just shiver on the inside. Like, I literally, I'm in my young Miami voice, I'm crying. Like, why is you out here like this? Get yourself together before you leave the fucking house. Get your hair braided and grease your scalp twice a week if you don't want to do your fucking hair. Or cut that shit off. Stop walking out there in this shit. There's, no, that's not okay. And then I really don't, like, you be having the nails done. Everything's done except for your head. And I'm not trying to just get on the women. I do know that black men like to, you know, go at black women a lot for the bonnets and shit. I still said what I said. I, I, don't, I stand by the fact that that is ratchet. It's ghetto. It's low class. It is. But so is the do-rags. You know what I'm saying? Get your fucking waves. Put your do-rag on at night. Get your waves throughout the night. And then wear that shit. And, and keep leave that shit at the house. Don't wear that shit out in public. That's embarrassing to me. I don't like seeing that. Um, the slides, that's more or so a personal choice for them. Um, a little shady with the fuzzy ones part, but okay. <laughs> but everything else, the tank top bodysuits, I can't, I can't dine here because I cuss a lot. <laughs> but um, the jerseys, that's, I guess that's their personal choice. Um, sagging pants, no sweatsuits. Um, now the sagging pants, I'm not going to lie, your boy from time to time. He ended up sagging, especially now I've lost a lot of weight. I've almost lost a hundred pounds, you guys. So I do end up doing it even inadvertently sometime. Um, but it's all in how you handle it. Cause I tell y'all yesterday, some man had let me know that when he was in the drive-thru. But then after he told me that he tipped me a hundred dollars. So by all means, like, please check me. <laughs> but at any rate, um, 
Yeah, so I, but that's just me needing to get a new wardrobe. On average, I tend not to sag. In fact, I was always the kid that had the pants up. Like, I, I'm very, your boy, your boy got a big butt. And I shoot, ooh, we do. And, oh, let me relax, okay. I was going to bust out and sing it real quick, but I can't um, remember the, the lyrics. I like to thank your mother for a butt like that. Can I get some fries with that shake? Shake. Okay, let me relax. But no, for real, your boy got a big butt. So, you know what I'm saying? For, for, I would wear stuff over it because I would be a little uncomfortable just having it out. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm uncomfortable seeing that shit. I can agree with that. I don't like the sagging. Pull your fucking pants up. I don't want to see your ass, bro. Some of y'all niggas ain't washing. I literally seen this post where this man said it's gay for a man to wipe his ass. So he got shit crust just sitting in between his ass. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to cuss, y'all, because I, I want to get more family friendly with my content. But, <clears throat> yeah, he got shit crust in his ass crack. We don't want to smell that shit. Um, so, yeah, please, by all means, pull your pants up. I seen another post where this dude said, if your drawers don't look like this, you ain't a hard worker. He been wearing the same drawers for three days and got shit stains in them. We don't want to see that shit. And I ain't saying everybody that says does that shit, but you get the gist of what Nobody wants to see your ass, bro. That's the point. So I do agree with the sagging. I can agree with the tank tops. You should want to go out and look presentable. You never know what type of opportunity you may run into. You may run into your next potential job. You know what I'm saying? You might be talking to somebody at the bar and they just had a... um. Let, hell, let's say you even had a hard day and got fired from your job. If you go out dressed out, dressed up versus looking like shit, you might end up talking to this person, you know, uh, just having a conversation with them through drinks. And they'll be like, oh, well, I'm looking for a person um, for this position. Da, 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 da. What's your experience? And boom, you just found a job opportunity right there. You can't get that opportunity in a bonnet or a do-rag or wearing some fucking tank top or tank top. You can't do that unless he asks you if you want to rap or whatever. But besides that, you can't do that. And you shouldn't want to. I do believe that we should want to hold ourselves to a certain standard and look a certain way in public. So I am in agreement with that. Excuse me. But like I said, his reasonings is where my issues are at. And also, this is another thing that um, I think we need to have a conversation about. Just because you are black, that doesn't mean you can speak to me any kind of way you want to or treat me any way you want to because you're black because I um and and being pro-black doesn't mean that either because I guarantee you but we'll get back to that because I guarantee you if that was a table full of white girls that would have went a whole different way that would have went a whole different way but with that being said yeah being pro-black doesn't mean you could treat me any way you want to simply because you're black you know I tell people this all the time same thing with like for instance black creatives black talents you know what I'm saying? People are like, like they act like you have to like a certain black person's movies or a certain black person's music. Um, I see this a lot, like with Kevin Hart. You know what I'm saying? If people don't like what he says, it's, oh, you're being negative. And you know what I'm saying? It just comes off as, woe is me. You're hating on another black man. Da, da, da. And it's like, no, I just don't think you're funny. Or no, I just don't think that your movies are that good. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all, y'all take that bullet to who you think it was for, because I ain't going to say no names. <laughs> <clears throat> but at any rate, um, yeah, just because something's black, that don't mean we have to agree with it. You know what I'm saying? Now, I will say when I do black owned business, when I do business with black companies, I am a little bit more lenient. You know, if it takes a little while for my package to get here, I'm not expecting Amazon Prime timing because I know you're doing this by yourself, you know, or your few friends that you've got to help you out. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit more lenient and laxed in that area. But... I can tell you I would have been the only one in that video if I was at that restaurant to get up and walk out. I would have been like, bitch, hand me my doggy bag. I'm about to bounce. I guess the food was good, though, because I ain't seen nobody get up and leave from either angle. But, yeah, like I said, I'm not, I'm, what kind of type, what type of time we on, player? Because that wouldn't have flew with me. I'll tell you that right now. That was disrespectful as hell. I did not like that shit. Like I said earlier, that goes back to what I said about logic over emotion. You know, and so many times we, we act like men don't have emotions. Anger is an emotion. Displaying that, that's an emotion. That's an emotional thing. In fact, I, you know, I'm just going to be honest. They say that black women are angry, but I see a lot more angry black men. I just got to be honest with the way that we carry ourselves sometimes. And it's sad how we get so crunk with our own, you know, not even just talking about gender at this point, but just black people in general. Like I said earlier, he would have never... Spoke to Susan, Kelly, and Sally like that. 
but that's another topic for another day <laughs> But yeah, like I said, you guys, um, that's, I think that's pretty much all that I wanted to state on the situation. Oh, and real quick, I have to call bullshit. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be picky with words, but let's not call this a family restaurant because it's, it's not a grown family restaurant, maybe. But he did say that in his rant. Um, it's, let's not act like these women was twerking around like in Chuck E. Cheese or something. Like, let's not do that, please. Is Chuck E. Cheese still open, bro? Let me relax. At any rate, let's, yeah, let's not act like they were twerking in Chuck E. Cheese. This is definitely a grown place, a grown, a grown people's place to chill and eat and have food at. Now, again, like I said earlier, the music does not mean automatically start twerking, but the ambiance, the used liquor bottles, the, um, twerk music. Somebody was going to throw ass sooner or later. I'm just going to say, yeah, the perfect combination. You was playing City Girls and Megan Thee Stallion. But with that being said, I also agree that we do need to conduct ourselves better in public, especially when we're in our own establishments. We should want to see each other flourish and prosper. But at the end of the day, we also need to watch how we treat each other. So with that being said, y'all let me know down below what y'all thought about the whole situation. And I will give that to y'all on my next topic. Peace. Hey, you guys, I'm sorry to come back real quick. I want y'all to rewatch this part and then we're going to go over this. Um, in case I wasn't clear, I agree with about half of his message and the other half is complete bullshit and it's rooted in either white supremacy or misogyny. But we'll get into the misogyny part because I forgot to cover this earlier. So y'all go ahead and rewatch this specific portion of his speech and then we'll talk about it real quick and I'm going to let y'all out. 75% of my customers are ladies, and I want men to show respect for themselves for how they carry themselves here. So how can I tell the men to respect themselves, and you guys are talking on glass here? All right, so y'all just seen that clip. Um, now, I'm not surprised dealing with an older black man. He does seem to be about in his 30s or 40s. And the way that a lot of our elder blacks, as I like to refer to them, even though he's not in that age range, he's more so, that would be like 50 and up. But a lot of the way that older black people think, it, it is flawed. You know what I'm saying? We are broken people raising broken people. Um, and that's just on it is what it is. That's not no shade. It's just the truth. But um, the fact that he had the nerve to say anything that a woman does has to do with a man maintaining his composure. That was complete and utter bullshit. I'm 22 years old. Um, and I'm sure you think that, you know, 22 year olds, you know, they're out here hoeing and fucking on anything they can and all this stuff. I'm actually very picky and choosy. Um, and tricking, what's up? Do you need a sugar baby? I'm just saying, but let me, let me relax. But at any rate, <laughs> um, this girl could be sitting there twerking. I would look, acknowledge it, might stare a little bit and go right back to my food. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not something that her twerking doesn't affect my composure as a man. And I thought that was very flawed in his logic. Um, so for him to say that, it just came off very misogynistic. And I think he needs to check that shit. Um, and the fact that he can't even, him, I haven't seen any things of the wife going back and forth with people, but I can believe it, you know what I'm saying? Because he's sticking with it to what he said, you know? And if this works out for him in the end, that's good. You know, the food does look good. And the fact that he told them, you can get the fuck out and nobody got up, you know, black people, we don't really go for disrespect like that. Um, and the fact that he, nobody got up, the food must be great. So I ain't gonna lie. I might have one of my sugar mamas buy it for me one day, but I definitely won't spend one of my damn pennies there. And that's all I can tell you. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the restaurant is located in Texas. I'm not sure what part of Texas. Let me look it up real quick for y'all. But, um, yeah, my, my, um, solution would be to, um, you know, not dine there if you have a, um, Dallas, Texas. There we go. Dallas, Texas. So um, at the end of the day, it seems like he's going to stand true on what he believes and what he said. And um, it is giving uppity Negro, Negro vibes. I'm just going to be honest. It's, it's giving you can't sit with us vibes. And like I said, some of the respectability politics that he laid out, I do agree with. But where they're rooted from is erroneous. And the misogynistic part of his speech, I wasn't feeling it. So that is my final conclusion. Y'all let me know what y'all think down below and I'll get back to y'all on the next video. Peace.